And uh, and the next match of the night then was the tag team match then between uh, the Hurt Business, which was Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin, who took on the New Day, uh, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods in a tag team match for the WWE Raw Tag Team Championships here. And... Um, and that, yeah, when this was, uh, you know, a solid uh, tag team match here uh, between the Hurt Business and the New Day, uh, like I said, uh, here. And that uh, this was, you know, a really good tag team match. I mean, we've seen these two teams, you know, face each other on Raw, like I said, over the past few weeks. Because, again, they've been having, you know two or three matches on Raw, and that both of these two teams, you know, do seem to, to have, you know, good chemistry, and this was, you know, a solid, well, tag team match here between Cedric Alexander, well, between the Hurt Business and the New Day, and uh, and again, it just showed again that why these are, you know, two of the best, well, tag teams on Raw at the moment, and why that the Hurt Business right now, as I said, you know, uh, are are a really good faction. And in the end, the Hurt Business then, well, the Hurt Business defeated both Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods to become the new Raw Tag Team Champions. And I predicted this uh, in my uh, preview and predictions as well for the Hurt Business to become the new Raw Tag Team Champions. And I am happy for that because I think this is what the Hurt Business, you know, needed to really, again, to gain momentum and to get a big win here. You know, especially, I think, for Cedric Alexander more because that I think that, you know, because of, um, I think just more for Cedric Alexander, but I also think because that, you know, the Hurt Business, I think, are just, well, they are one of the best things right now on Raw at the moment. And uh, and that they have, you know, that they needed that, like I said, that next kind of layer, that next, um, you know, bit of success. And so I was happy, like I said, that they defeated the New Day because I think, like I said, that at this point, the New Day, again, don't need to be, you know, the Raw Tag Team Champions and... You know, and I just feel that it was the right decision. I feel that, you know, that the Hurt Business deserved the win over the New Day. But again, they put it on again, you know, a good match here, a good tag team match between these two. And the match lasted for 10 minutes. And in the end, it was Cedric Alexander who pinned Kofi Kingston with the lumbar check. Uh, to get the win there so again the Hurt Business now have the United States uh, Championship with Bobby Lashley and then now the Raw Tag Team Championships with Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin so there we are with that and MVP again was also at ringside well with the Hurt Business as well but again, but that didn't, you know, take away from from the tag team match. But again, it was a solid tag team match. I, you know, I can't complain about it too much. And that, you know, it was a fine tag team match. And there we go with that. And so for the next match, then after that match, then we saw was was uh, was then the the women's uh, tag team match. Uh, for the WWE Women's uh, Tag Team Championships, which was Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, who were going to take on, well, who were going to face Oscar and then a mystery partner. Uh, because, that, as I said in my preview and predictions, that Oscar's original partner, who was Lana, well, was Lana, ended up uh, getting injured. Uh, well, kayfabe, I think, injured. Uh, in the end, so she was uh, pulled out of being Oscar's uh, partner. So instead, Oscar had to have a new partner, a mystery partner uh, for this match. So there was a lot of speculation, as I said, of who her partner could be. And that in the end, though, that one of the names that I did say of who Oscar's mystery partner would have ended up being... And it was uh, Charlotte Flair, and uh, Charlotte Flair uh, returned to be uh, Oscar's uh, mystery partner, mystery partner for this match. 
and that it is the first time that Charlotte has returned, that Charlotte Flair has returned uh, to action uh, since June uh, of last year, since the summer last year. So she's had, again, a really long break, Charlotte. But then I suppose, again, you know, you can't really blame her because, again, wow, off again of COVID and because she was probably just, you know, sorting herself out and probably just getting back into shape getting herself in, you know, back into shape to make her come back and to have her return. And this was a good way to, for them to bring Charlotte back. I mean, this was, you know, the right way to bring Charlotte Flair back as well. And it kind of makes sense because that Oscar and Charlotte, you know, do have that past, you know, rivalry as well that they've also had that they both again share a past rivalry together. And again, and that's what can end up making sometimes a good tag team. And I just think, like I said, that both Oscar and Charlotte, you know, is a good combination. But I mean, I'm pretty sure that some fans again would have wanted it to be Becky Lynch, you know, to have been, you know, uh, Oscar's mystery partner to have teamed up with Oscar, but again, it ended up being Charlotte Flair. But like I said, I'm fine with it because I think this was the right way to bring Charlotte, you know, to bring Charlotte Flair back. So, you know, I was okay with it. I was fine with, with Charlotte, you know, coming back and uh, to team with Oscar there. So there we are with that. And that in the end, they defeated both Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler uh, to become the new uh, women's uh, tag team champions. And uh, again, uh, and this was again, you know, definitely, uh, you know, a decent match. But really, like I said, it was more about, you know, again, Charlotte Flair's return and that Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, you know, kind of, well, tried to dominate Oscar and that they tried, uh, you know, to dictate, you know, the, the match until when Charlotte, you know, came in. But like I said, but Charlotte, you know, definitely uh, didn't miss a step in this match. And she, uh, you know, looked good. But uh, but there we are. But in the end, Oscar and Charlotte Flair capture the Women's Tag Team Championships. And I think it was, you know, about time because that both, you know, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, I think, were perhaps, you know, starting to... Uh, to run their course as the, you know, as the women's tag team champion. So I was fine with this, as I said, though, and that again, and this was again a decent tag team match, but it was more to do with Oscar and, and like I said, and Charlotte Flair, you know, Charlotte Flair making her in ring return. But, uh, but yeah, you know, making her return. Uh, you know, on Raw, for the first time on Raw, like I said, you know, for, for ages, well, since June uh, last year in the summer, so there we go with that, so Charlotte is back in, in, in the picture now, and she is, you know, uh, you know, in a tag team with Oscar. So I'm looking forward, you know, to see where this will go with Charlotte Flair and Oscar. But again, they become the new women's tag team champions. They became the new tag team, women's tag team champions. But I'm sure again that Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler will have their rematch anyway. That might even be at the Royal Rumble, but we'll have to wait and see where it goes. But there we are with that. And the next match of the night and the penultimate match of WWE TLC 2020 that came then was the second tables, ladders and chairs match of the night. And this was the WWE Universal Championship uh, match. And it was Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens, Roman Reigns versus KO. Uh, in a TLC match for the WWE Universal Championship uh, here. And, uh, and and this, uh, and what a match uh, that this was uh, here as well between Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens. And, uh, and they just had a, a really good TLC match here. And I am giving this, I think, my match of the night as well from WWE uh, TLC 2020. Because, you know, this was a really uh, good uh, TLC match. I mean, I do kind of think, as I said, that this probably would have, you know, done better being the main event to TLC. 
But I mean, there we are with that. But this was a really good TLC match. And I just prefer this one, you know, to the AJ Styles and Drew McIntyre TLC match. Because I just think this match, you know, had a bit more drama uh, between these two. And, uh, and this was just a really good match. I mean, Kevin Owens, who was trying to prove to himself as well that this was, again, a massive deal for him, a massive opportunity for KO uh, here against Roman Reigns. And I have to say that, again, that he, he was really up for it. He was up for this match and that the match started with Kevin Owens uh, attacking uh, Roman Reigns as well. You know, not even, again, like making his entrance Kevin Owens but he attacked uh, Roman Reigns though before the bell rang and that then it just you know got you know straight into the match and uh, again and it was just you know a really uh, good match well an, ent an entertaining uh, TLC match and and I see again that this is an example again of that you know that again you know that you can again get, you know, good TLC matches, you know, like I said. But this was definitely, I think, the best of the two TLC matches. But, I mean, yeah, this was just really good. And the fact, again, that Kevin Owens was doing all he could to uh, to beat Roman Reigns. But ultimately, again, it all came down, you know, to Jey Uso, who helped Roman Reigns, though, to retain the Universal Championship, as in the end, Jey Uso, uh, in the end, interfered to help Roman Reigns to defeat Kevin Owens, and uh, and, and Roman Reigns then uh, retained the Universal Championship with, again, the help of Jey Uso, and I think, again, that is the only thing that just takes away from the match, is that, again, the interference of Jey Uso, who came in to help Roman Reigns, I think that's the only thing that does maybe just take away from the match, that maybe some fans would have, you know, again, got tired with, or would have just been annoyed with, because Jey Uso was constantly trying to, uh, was trying to do, you know, was trying to stop Kevin Owens to becoming Universal Champion. But I think at the same time, you know, it did again make, you know, Kevin Owens again more of the underdog. And it definitely, again, I suppose it it helped, you know, Kevin Owens out here. But in the end, again, that because, again, of the two-on-one, that you know, the two-on-one advantage and Kevin Owens just not quite being able to, to overcome the odds... Uh, to, to become a two-time, you know, universal champion. But ultimately, you know, we knew anyway that Roman Reigns was going to, to walk out of TLC, to walk out on this pay-per-view as the universal champion. So there we are with that. But, you know, like I said, but Kevin Owens still looked good in this match here. And then again, this is probably... Again, you know, the biggest match that Kevin Owens has had, as I said, for some time. And uh, and he looked good. And uh, and this was, you know, a really good match. So there we are with that. And the match lasted 24 minutes and 45 seconds. And another really good spot in this match as well was actually Roman Reigns, who actually speared through a barricade as well. That was really cool. And Kevin Owens, like, stepped out of the way and Roman Reigns, uh, you know, went through the barricade. That was a cool uh, spot as well. But, I mean, yeah, but it was just a really good match uh, when I went back to, to see this over, you know, on the highlights, but um, <clears throat> on, on TLC. But this was really just, a, again, you know, I wouldn't say, again, it's one of the best TLC matches, but definitely... You know, I would definitely recommend to see this TLC match, though. I would, you know, recommend seeing it because I think, again, that Owens and Reigns had a really good and fun, you know, TLC match here. I mean, like I said, I wouldn't say, again, that it was too brutal, but you definitely, again, had enough, you know, drama. You had enough, you know, entertaining uh, spots. As I said, like Roman Reigns, who who went through the barricade, you know, the, the ringside uh, barricade. Again, when he tries, to, again, to do that spear, you know, when he does his spear, you know, through the barricade, but Kevin Owens dodged him, and, you know, and, and Roman Reigns went through the barricade. So that, again, was a cool spot. 
but uh, but again, as I said, Roman Reigns again walks into 2021 as the Universal Champion, and that again, what a few months that Roman Reigns uh, has had as well on Friday Night SmackDown. That again, this is the best that Roman Reigns has ever looked in his career as well. And then again, and this is just why that right now that I'm a fan of Roman Reigns and I think that why so many people are just, are right now are saying that Roman Reigns is the best thing going on right now in WWE because he has just been, you know, nailing it. He has just been doing so well as the Universal Champion, as a heel now, as a, you know, the head of the table. And, uh, and, and, and yeah, and like I said, you know, he came back, like I said, Roman Reigns after, again, having that hiatus again, you know, in, in 2020. But again, this is the best that he's ever, you know, looked. And again, you know, we'll have to see again where his next, uh, you know, match goes. Well, who his next opponent is going to be to challenge him next at the Royal Rumble. So again, it's going to be uh, fascinating there to see how it's all going to play out and unfold for Roman Reigns in 2021. Because again, I expect again, you know, a big year for Roman Reigns uh, to come. Well, certainly again for the Royal Rumble, but uh, for him to play a part again with the Royal Rumble so there we go with that. So again, that both him and Drew McIntyre go into 2021 as both the WWE and Universal Champions, respectively. And then, like I said, guys, and on then to the main event then to WWE TLC 2020. And that this then is was the last pay-per-view main event of 2020 as well. And this was uh, the Firefly Inferno match between Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt and The Fiend Bray Wyatt in the Firefly Inferno match. And that again, like I said, this has been the first Inferno match that we have seen for a few years. And uh and yeah, and that uh and this was definitely again uh you know definitely a, a spectacle you know match uh as well. Again if you did you know see this match this was definitely a spectacle well to say the least. But again I really can't say that Again, that this was, well, again, you know, a great uh, match here between Orton and Bray Wyatt. But definitely in terms of how how it was set up and how that they did this Inferno match. You know, again, it definitely came off, you know, you know, definitely not bad. But I think, again, that some of it, you know, was, well, pre-taped as well. But... But as I said, I mean, this this definitely, again, had a lot of interest because I just think that fans wanted to see how this match was going to go here between Randy Orton and The Fiend. And uh, and I have to say, I mean, you know, and, and what a year as well that Randy Orton has had, you know, this year. But in the end, I mean, what, what happened was that Randy Orton defeated The Fiend Bray Wyatt in the end by burning him, by burning uh, Bray Wyatt, as he uh, burned him down, basically killing uh, Bray Wyatt off. And uh, just basically, I mean, he poured again, like all, um, like all again, gasoline, not gasoline, but like, you know, he poured uh, the gasoline or whatever, you know, over um, Bray Wyatt after he hit an RKO on The Fiend. And The Fiend again was down, and he again, he lit Bray Wyatt on fire. But obviously, again, I mean, we all know again that he wouldn't have again really been set on fire. But I mean, but still, it was cool. As I said, though, this match, it was definitely cool. But at the same time, I mean, some people again are going to, you know, probably, you know, think of it again as being a bit cheesy, a little bit, you know, funny as well. But but yeah, but definitely it was uh, interesting and that now this means that the fiends, you know, is is now, uh, well, we don't know what's going to happen to the fiend now. But I do think, though, that the fiend is going to come back because I don't think this will be the last we are going to see of the fiend. 
but I do just think that he is going to come back with a new look. And I definitely think that, you know, Bray Wyatt is going, I think, now to, to reinvent The Fiend and to change The Fiend up. But he is going to come back, I think, to get revenge on Randy Orton because I think it's pretty obvious. I think it's obvious that, that he's not going to get away with just burning you know, Bray Wyatt and they're not to, you know, not for Bray Wyatt to not get revenge on Randy Orton. But, uh, but there we are. But this was definitely, as I said, the most, you know, again, definitely the most intriguing match, as I said, of TLC 2020. But that is what closed out TLC 2020 was Randy Orton again, you know, doing his pose outside of the ring after he uh, after he burnt uh, Bray Wyatt, after he burnt the Fiend Bray Wyatt, burnt the Fiend and his jacket, and basically, again, he killed the Fiend, he killed Bray Wyatt, so... But there we are with that, so... And, uh, and that is what happened in this match. And uh, there we are, so overall, guys, and that was it for WWE TLC Tables, Ladders and Chairs 2020. And overall then, guys, my overall pay-per-view score rating for WWE TLC 2020 that I am going to give is, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I'm going to give it a 7 because I do think that both of the TLC matches were good. And uh, even though that, as I said, that with Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens, that you did have a lot of, you know, interference from Jey Uso. But though it was definitely, again, though, still a good match. And I still think, again, that this wasn't the worst pay-per-view of 2020. And I think, again, this was certain, certainly... You know, not a not the bad way, not a bad way to end 2020 for WWE. Not a bad pay-per-view to end on, unlike TLC 2019, unlike TLC 2019, uh, you know, the last TLC. But, uh, but this was a better, you know, TLC pay-per-view. One of the more better, you know, TLC pay-per-views, in my opinion, maybe even since like 2016 or maybe 2018. I'm not sure, but but it was definitely, again, you know, a better put together uh, pay-per-view. This pay-per-view felt like, though. And then again, you had, you know, solid matches on the undercard as well, plus the return of Charlotte Flair. So the return of Charlotte. And teaming up with Oscar to become the women's tag team champions. So, yeah. And then for my match of the night for WWE TLC 2020 again, I am giving it to Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens in their TLC match for the WWE Universal Championship. That I am giving that match three stars and three quarters. A three and three quarters stars out of five because I think that again even though again you have the interference of Jey Uso it was still a really good match it was still you know an engaging TLC match not engaging but I think just that again you know Kevin Owens was trying to was was trying to do all he could you know to stop you know Roman Reigns that he had to, you know, fight both, you know, Che Uso and, you know, Roman Reigns. But it was still, again, a good match, though. And I still think the stuff that Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens did was still good. So there we are. So that is it for my review of TLC 2020, guys. And thank you for tuning in to my last pay-per-view review of 2020. And I will see you again next in the next video and uh that will come soon but thank you guys for watching this and uh and again that concludes all of the pay-per-view reviews now for 2020 and i will be back you know in another few days peace and uh and don't forget again guys if you like this review to go and subscribe to the channel to the face that runs the YouTube, the wrestling youtube community and uh and again and here's to 2021 here's to a big year 
for 2021 for the channel.